Good evening, everyone. For anybody I didn't get a chance to meet, my name is Jennifer Jones. I'm Executive Director of the Salem County Chamber of Commerce, and it's my very great pleasure to welcome you all here this evening to the Get to Know Your Candidates event. Hoping everybody got here early so you, that you could do some networking and actually meet some of the candidates. Um, without further ado, I'm going to turn the program over to our Chair of Government Relations for the Chamber and President of Salem Community College, Dr. Mike Gorman. Thank you very much. I uh, want to welcome you to Salem Community College. It is your Salem Community College, the affordable, quality, and empowering educational opportunity. That's the last commercial we'll give for the college tonight. Uh, this is a wonderful event. We are proud to be hosting it. Uh, on behalf of the chamber, I want to also say thank you for coming out. Uh, if you would please rise for the Pledge to the Flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Thank you so very much. Uh, just for your information, this event is being live streamed this evening uh, via the Salem Community College website. Uh, there are a couple of things that we'd like to get in order before we call the candidates forward. Each candidate will have 10 minutes to self-introduce and make a presentation to the audience, describing their platform, concerns, and specific issues that have been involved and will help Salem County's economic development, that of South Jersey, as well as employment opportunities and educational opportunities. There will be a live drawing for the position order, which will occur here on stage. Our, one of our students, Uzi Cortez, will uh, hold the basket and allow the candidates to self-select from that. There is a strict 10-minute time limit for the benefit of the candidates. We've put a uh, TV in the back that has the uh, countdown, and I'll be here in the corner to urge you on as we get to that conclusion. Please remain positive throughout the evening. Remain focused on your achievements, accomplishments, credentials, and background. Everyone here is anxious to hear your version of your vision for New Jersey as well as uh, Salem County. With that, I'd like to call the uh, Senate and Assembly candidates forward. Uzi, if you would step forward as well. Uh, why don't we come up on stage? I didn't preordain sides here. I figured everybody would pick their own. <laughs> and I would ask the Senate candidates to step forward. Boozy, over here. <laughs> Gentlemen, I picked your places. There's only two in here. <laughs> well, that's because of you. There's only two of you. I guess I'm going second. Okay. Okay. I'm going okay. first. Sir, you are up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, everyone. It is a uh, pleasure to be here again in Salem County, uh, one of the most beautiful counties, I think, in the state of New Jersey. And we're going to continue to work to keep it that way. Uh, over the years, uh, we've been here for a little while, John and myself, Adam has joined us a few years back. When you talk about accomplishments, we go all the way back when we uh, first got into office and, and wound up with the new bridge into Salem County. Uh, when the Finlaw building collapsed, we were able to secure the funds to save the facade of the Finlaw building and eventually see the Finlaw building rebuilt. Um, we have, um, we spent year after year watching freeholders run out to the Gateway Industrial Park every election season saying, look, we're going to build this. Well, it never got built until myself and John at the time were successful in getting state funding for the sewer line and what you saw was a whole bunch of jobs created uh, in that industrial park, not ones that were talked about that were actually created. We had a major, major issue this year in the state of New Jersey, which is school funding. We fought like hell. We had to shut the state government down for three days, but we finally started the process of moving the school funding where the money will follow the child, where the child will actually get 
the money that they're entitled to rather than what we have going on right now. And it wasn't an easy fight. It was, it was a fight. I was fighting with, the, uh, unfortunately, the NJEA. They didn't want to see anything change. They thought it was fine for school districts that were overfunded to keep it. We had the top 50 districts that are overfunded in the state of New Jersey were getting funded for 18,500 children they didn't have. Now think about that. Getting funding for 18,500 children they didn't have. And they thought that was okay. Now the 50 districts with the lowest funding had 12,500 students that they actually had in school. That's not fair. Well, it's not easy getting a whole lot of things done when, at, look, we, have, we had a, a Democrat governor at the time of the school funding formula passed, and, you know, that's how politics are. The Democrats had to vote for everything, and they insisted on hold harmless and adjustment aid and uh, enrollment caps. And those things actually really screwed the formula up. But the good news is we found a path forward. Next year, we're going to pass a millionaire's tax. I don't think that's going to impact a whole lot of people down here in Salem County because it's going to be a true millionaire's tax where not one penny more until you go above a million dollars. That'll generate over $600 million. That $600 million with moving funds from these other funded school districts is going to be able to put, we're going to be able to put about $800 million into school funding next year. So between this year and, and next year, we'll come close to a billion dollars in new school funding. And then over a period of five years, we have a plan to get to 100% funding. They said it couldn't get done. Well, look, everything in the state of New Jersey is very parochial. People worry about their own districts. And when they have more than they're entitled to, they're not really willing to give. But we fought very hard, and we were successful in getting that done. You know, one of the other big accomplishments for us was Salem City School District was actually the first school district that was added to an Abbott status at the time because of the underfunding, the first one probably in 30 years. So we have worked, in an, and when you have running mates, I don't want to eat up everything, but we've worked, I think, very hard in cooperation and another really good partnership. We, along with your freeholder board, went and had a press conference about Salem Hospital not too long ago. And I can report today that we're much closer than we were when we, started the press, when we started that press conference. And I thank Bob and the others that were involved in it because, you know, Salem Hospital at one time employed 700 people. We want to bring that hospital back to a full-service hospital the way it was before CHS took it over. And we want to make sure that we bring back the services. Because we're talking to business people in Salem County, they're telling us, when someone goes to Christiana to get a procedure, well, if there's rehabs involved, well, you're staying in Delaware to get the rehab. If there's other programs, you're staying in Delaware to get those programs. We need to bring those dollars back into Salem County. And we're very fortunate that we were able to convince Inspira to step up, and Inspira is willing to take over the operation. And it's a lot easier when you have somebody that knows who you are. You know, I know that about Salem. They like familiar faces. And Inspira is a name brand that everyone knows around here. So I think that uh, all the way around, we've had quite a bit of success. But look, we still have a lot of work to do. We were successful in getting transitional aid for Salem, Salem City, for Penns Grove. But, you know, transitional aid is just a piece that keeps you stable. In fact, at, at this point, it doesn't even keep you stable as much as you would like. So look, economic development is the priority that this county needs. They need jobs. And we pledge to continue to work with the Freeholder Board and my colleagues to make sure that we bring every opportunity. I'll give you a little special, little special. Salem County is the only county in the state of New Jersey that doesn't, if you have a manufacturing facility and you employ 50 people, 25 in manufacturing, you don't pay the energy tax. And why J.E. Berkowitz is in Gateway? Because they don't pay the energy tax. So they save about $600,000 a year where they would have where they would have paid for, where they would have had to pay the energy tax. Salem County alone has that designation, so that's something we should be able to get done. We should be able to bring more manufacturing. And now that Chamorros has taken over the DuPont site, all I can tell you is my personal experience with Chamorros has been phenomenal. John and I, years ago, started working at the Rapano site up in uh, Greenwich Township, and we couldn't get DuPont to move an inch. They talked, they met with us, they would, they would spend a lot of time with us, but would not move an inch. Chamorros came in, we were able to sell the site, we're building a second port. Uh, Paulsboro is the first port, 
Chamorros and Greenwich is the second port, and we intend to build a third port. We've talked about it, and we're going to work with Chamorros. No matter what, it's got to be, the location itself is ideal for a logistics center. It's, you know, everyone knows where it's at, a quarter of a mile is the term, uh, 295, a half a mile is a turnpike. We need to focus on bringing jobs. You know, when we walk door to door in Pennsville and you see some of the communities that are really struggling, one thing is apparent, jobs are needed. And we're going to continue to work with all levels of governments to ensure that jobs are created in this county. So with that, I want to say thank you all for the opportunity. Thank you. Not as polished as uh, Senator Sweeney. He's had a lot of years of practice. Um, so I'll read my speech just to make sure I get all the good talking points. Um, I'm honored to be here tonight at the Salem County Meet the Candidates event. I'm Fran Grenier, for those of you that don't know me, and I'm running to be your next state senator. I'll be quick and to the point on a lot of uh, the bullets here. I will oppose any effort to make New Jersey a sanctuary city, a sanctuary state, all of the above. We are a nation of laws. There is a process to change those laws. Our legislators in Trenton cannot thumb their noses at our federal government. I support term limits for all elected officials, local, county, and state. Concerning the business environment in New Jersey, I will not support expanding New Jersey's family leave plan. We already have one of the most comprehensive family leave plans in the country. I will not support any legislation that will force business owners to provide sick pay. And I will not support a rapid increase to $15 minimum wage. All three of these bills are currently working their way through some portion of the state legislator, legislative body. If passed, these three anti-business bills will continue to anchor New Jersey as the least business-friendly state in the country. We can do better. We have plenty of problems in this state that need to be fixed. Expanding government control on how our small businesses operate is not one of those problems. Government involvement should be limited to the safety of the public. Let's talk about school funding. Senator Sweeney talked about it a little bit. For the past seven years, until this year, the elected officials in Trenton had flat funded the, the school funding formula coming to our schools while our property taxes continued to rise. Trenton career politicians couldn't figure out how to cut waste and fund the important issues like school funding. It's time to properly fund our schools equally across the state. I believe everyone has a right to their pensions and retirement plans. Once someone enters into retirement, they shouldn't be changing the plans that those people made plans going into retirement. Social Security, Medicare, state pensions. Once you retire, those are fixed benefits. If you want to try and fix the budget, you do it for people who haven't retired yet. Over the recent years, the homestead rebate has been cut in half. Next year, these rebates may be in jeopardy. I will fight to restore the homestead rebate. That's it. I want to thank you for coming out tonight, and I ask for your vote on November 7th. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. We'll next move into the order for the assembly candidates. And if my quite capable assistant will come up here, Uzi, we'll put these into the basket. And if the candidates would step forward. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Our order is. I got number three. Three. Four. four. No one. One. I'm um, two. Process of elimination. One. Okay. It's almost the exact opposite of all terms. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Adam Talaferro, and. First off, thanks so much, Dr. Gorman, Salem Community College, for allowing us to have this type of forum. Been in the legislature for 
three years now, just finished up my first full term. And I tell you, it's been a, a fantastic learning experience. Uh, you know, I want to take you back just you know, briefly to talk about my, my prior career before I got into the legislature. And seven years ago, I decided to get involved in politics. Had no experience, but I knew I wanted to help in some capacity. And the first person that I went to was a gentleman to my right. And he, he approached me and said, would you be interested in getting involved in politics? I said no, because for me, I had a spinal cord injury, I had my foundation and my job, and that's, I thought, made life complete. But after having an opportunity to talk to this man and hear his story about why he got involved in politics, 16 years, it hasn't changed. When I asked him why he got involved, he said, well, simply to help, to help people. And that was intriguing to me because serving in this capacity, you truly have an opportunity to help people that aren't as fortunate as you, people that need assistance from time to time. So I got involved. Started out on the Special Services School District School Board in Gloucester County, then had the, the, the fortune of serving on the Freeholder Board in Gloucester County for four years. Then the vacancy occurred in the third legislative district where Celeste Riley stepped down and I was fortunate enough to join this team. And I call it a team because, as you heard, many of the initiatives that Senate President spoke of are initiatives that didn't happen overnight, but initiatives that have taken years and years and years to come to fruition. So I joined the legislature. I've had the opportunity to serve on the Education and Agricultural Committees. The main reason I got involved in politics from day one were basically two things, access to a quality education, and access to health care. Uh, so without those two tenets in, in all of our lives, I don't think any of us would be where we are today. So I talk about my, my, you know, my proudest accomplishments since being in the legislature. Senate President touched upon it, standing next to him in the school funding fight. We had a governor, we had a speaker in the, the house that we sit in that were willing to go forward with a budget that didn't guarantee that our schools were gonna have adequate funding. We didn't wanna shut down the government. The Senate President had to stand strong and I was proud to stand with them to ensure that our schools got their fair share. It was an eye opener to me. Maybe not to many in this room, but they often in Trenton forget that this county exists. And it's our job each and every day to let them know that this county, like any other county throughout the state, deserves its fair share. And I'm fortunate to be a part of this team. We have someone in the highest office in the Senate that reminds people each and every day that Salem County should have a voice. And we echo that voice on the assembly side. On the Agricultural Committee, we focus on many things that are important to this county that we have the honor of representing. One of the things that, again, goes hand in hand with serving on the Education Committee is ensuring that students have access to a quality breakfast, those that can't afford it, and working with our farming community to share some of the food resources that they don't currently use to make them available to students. I've toured many farms since I've been on the Agricultural Committee. As you could probably tell, I didn't grow up on a farm. I had never been on a farm in my life. But that's the great part about serving in the legislature. Each and every day, you have the opportunity to learn, the opportunity to understand what our people are going through, what our residents here in Salem County are going through. And I hope you all have, over the last couple years, have seen it myself and of course my, my colleagues that we're present here each and every day. It's not an opportunity that goes by that I hope that you, you, you don't see us. I was confident walking in here because this, you look at me, we're not the, the, the politicians that just come walk, walking in when it's election time. We're your friends, we're your, we're your voice in Trenton. And I ask humbly 
for your support on November 7th, along with the Senate President and my colleague, John Bergicelli. The last thing that I'll leave you with is thinking about the future of Salem County. Throughout this election and in elections past and throughout my time in the legislature, I had an opportunity to walk almost every community in this county. This county has tremendous hope. This county has a lot of people, regardless of what side of the aisle that you're on, that are willing to put their minds and their hearts together to make this a better place. Look at my colleagues to the left. You won't hear us argue. We respect one another. And I respect anybody up here who's given the time to dedicate to the betterment of Salem County. So for me, it's been a privilege, it's been an honor, and I hope you give me the privilege of serving you two more years. Thank you so much. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Phil Donahue, and uh, I, uh, I want to thank Salem Community College for having me here. I want to thank Dr. Gordon for employing me here. Uh, I would like to keep that job, win or lose, the big bucks, you know. Um, one of the things, uh, as an educator, um, I, I should give you my background. I always give it to my students here. Uh, I, I went to Temple, graduated from Temple, and went on to get master's degrees from Widener and the University of Pennsylvania, where I became a James Madison Fellow. Um, and I, I taught school in, in Philadelphia for a lifetime, and now I'm teaching here. I also taught at the Philadelphia Community College, and I also taught at Kingsway High School. But while I was teaching in Philadelphia, I got an opportunity to work as a boilermaker uh, at down at Salem Nuclear, but actually worked on the rigging gang uh, building Hope Creek. And uh, at that time, um, I'm going to go in, into the weeds here, okay? And by the way, if you want to make me feel at home, just take your phones out and start texting. Um, anyway, uh, in those days, LAC was paid big time. There was a thing called the gross receipts tax. And the gross receipts tax uh, was, was put on the uh, Salem 1 and Salem 2. And uh, LAC almost didn't, and when I say LAC, I say uh, Lower Alloys Creek. Um, they benefited from having the nuclear plants built and um, really didn't know what to do with much of the money. Uh, they, they bought new fire trucks. They, they bought new police trucks, uh, a whole fleet of police cars and actually gave them away uh, after they used them for a year or two because they had so much money coming in. Well, the state noticed this, <laughs> and they took it away. Uh, they changed the gross receipts tax, and this goes back to the 1880s. This has nothing to do with these guys. Um, the gross receipts tax was, was 100 years, and they decided to change it into an energy tax. And from that point on, LAC and the county uh, share in a portion of the energy tax. Eventually, the energy tax became what's called COMTRA, Consolidated Municipal Property, T uh, Property Tax Relief. And what happens is the, the power plants and other generating stations, Oyster Creek, uh, Duck Island, uh, you can name them, uh, they all put into this fund, and then the fund, which is not in the state budget, okay, it's a separate fund, Comtra, they give it back to the municipalities based on a formula. And, and you might wonder, what's Salem County getting? Well, this year, okay, Comtra amounted to a pile of money consisting of one point four seven billion dollars now that last part that's seven point four seven that's seventy million dollars that's almost the budget for Salem County okay now it used to be LAC got 50 50 on the gross receipts tax 
what did we get? Well, um, I'll tell you what some other places got. Uh, Atlantic City got 41 million. Camden got 101 million. What did Salem County get? Salem County, not counting LAC and county because they depend on this, got $12 million. Now, you might say, well, Atlantic City is a big city. Well, Atlantic City is a big city, but it only has 35,000 people. And although Salem County is a small county, we have 65,000 people, okay? Oh, and also we have something else. Salem Nuclear, Hope Creek, those three generating stations probably donate somewhere north of $300 million in energy tax. Now some companies have been excluded, but not PSC and G, not Atlantic City Electric, they're contributing to this fund, which is then spread around the state. We need to get fairer funding for, for Salem County. First of all, we're the host community for three nuclear plants. Now, let me just give you a, a little aside here. I have a friend who lives on the main line in Pennsylvania, you know, the main line. He, only, he pays less taxes than I do. He lives within two miles of the King of Prussia Mall. That rateable keeps his taxes low. Our rateable, the rateable that represents the sale nuclear, we don't benefit from. They took those taxes away 40 years ago. And now we're struggling, okay? We could use a new formula for Comptra. One that, let's say, for example, we gave, I don't know, what would, you, what would be fair? 10% of the money we send to Trenton? 20%? I don't know what the number is, but $12 million is less than one third of what Atlantic City's getting. And we have twice their population. So you, I mean, you guys can do the math, okay? It's not fair to Salem County. And we need to revisit whatever iteration they've come up with, with these various formulas. They've put a formula in there that shortchanges us. Us, the host community for three nuclear plants. You know what those nuclear plants are worth? I mean, you're talking billions. And if you put that, okay, you've, if you put that on our tax roll and we were able to tax it, our problems would be solved. Even if we took 10% of what Comptra is, okay, that's $140 million, folks. And $140 million is two years of our Salem County budget. And if we did that, you could finally raise my salary here at Salem Community College. Thank you. Please vote for Phil Donahue, Linwood Donaldson, and Fran Grenier. Well, good evening to everyone. Thank you to the chamber, the community college, to my colleagues, to those that are running against us. Good evening, fellows, as well. Phil, I always enjoy when you talk because there's good history to, to, to think through. A few points I'd like to make uh, for those that are here, maybe those that are watching, maybe covered in three categories. First of all, as uh, Adam said, it is an honor and a privilege to serve. And as I stand here today, I can speak for the Senate President and for Adam, since this is a re-election campaign for him, that we approach this year's election with the same passion that we did the first year we ever ran to represent this wonderful legislative district. There is fire, there is interest, there is focus to stay active and to do what is best. To serve the people of Salem County, we have made sure and we again commit to have the highest level of constituent services we can possibly deliver. Anyone who's ever interacted with our office in Salem City, the county seat where we're based at, I think will tell you 
that we work to be responsive, we work to be courteous, we work to cut through the red tape that the state may offer, and to make sure anyone in this county who's engaged with our state apparatus gets the very best service and, and possibly the very best outcome we can possibly get for them. It's the little things that matter. Also, a couple of points that I think are of interest and important because others have touched on it. For the senior citizens, we have battled to some degree of success to make certain that the senior property freeze program, property tax freeze program, is in effect. We collectively, by the way, it was started by Jack Collins, started with a modest $15,000 of income. Statutorily, it should be at almost $90,000 now. This governor has fought us every step of the way. Presently, it's stalled at about 71,000. Two times he vetoed our move. I'm sorry, one time he vetoed our move to bring it into the $80,000 range. The other time he did it by way of budget language and got around the legislature. That program with a different governor will be adjusted upward again so seniors will be able to have their property taxes frozen who are in a little bit of higher income. Along those lines for seniors, something very important, the Senate President was directly involved in the negotiations this year as the budget cycle unfolded, was we will make income, senior income, um, up to $100,000 will be exempt from New Jersey's income tax. Presently, it's $15,000 and $20,000 depending on your marital status. It's going to phase in over, I want to say, four years, Steve, is that correct? Over four years. That will match Pennsylvania. That's going to help seniors help make New Jersey more affordable so that it begins this year and will phase in. So we have the senior property tax freeze, which will do better when people talk about change. A change in the governor will make that program robust again. And also the freeze, which the governor finally agreed to sign as part of this year's negotiations. Very important in this county because the county has done so well in farmland preservation, is infrastructure to drive business back into this county, especially along the western side of the county where the master plan calls for it, and that is the Comores plant, as Steve spoke about. The Transportation Trust Fund, through great struggle, has been reauthorized, frankly, absent the governor's participation, took the legislature to act to piece this thing together. And this year, as we stand here now, the county will tell you that they're getting double the amount of money from the Department of Transportation for highway programs within the state. In addition to that, each municipality will see their allotment from the Transportation Trust Fund double. And most importantly, to all the citizens of New Jersey, because of an initiative we put on the ballot last November, every penny collected at the gas pump for that tax is now dedicated to the Transportation Trust Fund. Can't be weaseled away. We did the same thing with that we did with the Unemployment Insurance Fund. When we first took office, governors of both parties would raid that to use it for the budget. We went to the people of New Jersey, changed the Constitution. Our unemployment fund is, is fully funded because of that effort. And the Transportation Trust Fund is now locked away. So every penny you pay is going to get to the program it's supposed to, it's supposed to go to. In addition, this year, I look at our, our partners on the freeholder board, uh, a request was made from the mayor of Salem City, from Freeholder Lowry, that money was needed to improve the rail line going into Salem City and into the port. And they asked, that, was there a consideration of a way to find $3 million? We went to work right away. And Ben will tell you, there's a little bit of a struggle between working with engineers who I think often speak a different language, and then the bureaucrats who also speak a different language. But we collectively knew one thing. We were asked to help. $3 million was needed. The county was prepared to borrow it, but what didn't really want to do that, wasn't in a position to do that. And we report here today that that $3 million, in fact, has reached the county. I'm correct, Ben, I'm looking over there. Uh, so that, that addition and improvement of that rail line will reach that port. And I'm told that there, are, uh, there is a customer waiting to go in there. And that's an example of what happens when you're well positioned and when you have relationships and when you're in a position to pick up a phone and speak directly to a commissioner because, because a relationship has been built over time. And when you have the weight of the Senate President's office standing with you, and to the lesser extent myself and my role in the Assembly as well as Adam, my friends, it's a formidable team when it's focused and we are very focused. Transportation Trust Fund is going to be critical. And we say loud and clear, we recognize that the future for economic prosperity, the biggest thing of peace is the Comore site, and I see representatives of the company here. And we're very pleased with how they are conducting themselves and their willingness to bring other people in and bring tenants in that can bring jobs. And we have said for anyone that's interested, county to tenant to whoever, that we will bring the full weight of the state. The stuff you see going on in Camden City, that same program in a different iteration is available and will work there. And we will turn, we will turn Trenton and the Economic Development Authority upside down at the first bite of someone who's willing to come there. And that includes Comores if they want to site another facility there. 
And by the way, that wastewater treatment facility needs to get back online because that can be immediate benefit to host community of Carney's Point. So there are assets to work with, and there's reason for a lot of hope. But it's going to take a concerted effort from all of us. And we pledge to you that we'll continue that effort on our part. We know how to do this. We need a partner from the municipality to the county on through us, and we will get it done. As example, as, uh, as I pointed out with our success recently with the Transportation Trust Fund. So for seniors, we have programs that with a new governor will be re-enhanced, but are already in place, and we have fought to keep them there. For the school systems, as Steve touched on and Adam touched on, we can have some immediate property tax relief in addition to the homestead program, which by the way, this governor has cut in half. So right now, your household income has to be $75,000 and under, and you can still get into the homestead rebate program. If your household involves some disabilities and some other considerations, it's up to 150,000. But the point is, the most immediate relief we can bring to the tax bill is to get these school funding for him to straighten away. For seven years, we battled with this governor. He froze it when he came in and never adjusted it to the population as it moved. And this year, finally, Steve was able to break through, had to shut the government down for three days or four days. The governor took a break. He went to the beach. We continued to work. We were successful in getting this money to the school district. Now, the big amount of money and the real move comes next year in the Sweeney plan. And by the way, we're going to insist as that money moves into the school districts that a portion of that go directly on the tax bill for relief. That'll, that'll be helpful to everyone. So my friends, to all of you in this room, to those who may be watching, we ask that you evaluate our record, evaluate how we have conducted ourselves, and hear this, this, this voice loud and clear that our, that our spirit for this county, our willingness to be engaged, our, our delight in simply being your representative is stronger than ever. And uh, if you trust us for another term, uh, you can be sure that you will see us, we will be with you, and with a cooperative effort, uh, we will continue to make pro progress that Salem County's best days are in front of it. Thank you so much. All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Linwood Donaldson and I am running to be your assemblyman for the third legislative district. Uh, I'd like to thank the Chamber of Commerce and SEC for hosting this event and thank all of you for coming out and participating in the process. Um, the process doesn't work if we don't have informed citizens and we don't have people on both sides to give people a choice on election day. So thank you for that. Um, the time to make a change in the legislative uh, district is now. Uh, we need to start making meaningful progress um, on bringing economic development opportunities to all parts of the third district, as well as taking steps to reduce property taxes. Now, I'd like to give a brief background on myself. I was born and raised in South Jersey and truly love being a part of this community. That is why I am committed to serving the residents of this district. I graduated from Richard Stockton University and received my law degree from Rutgers Camden. And as a little fun fact, Adam and I actually have the same legal writing professor. Just some general trivia. Um, I am a licensed attorney in New Jersey and Pennsylvania, and I currently work for a nonprofit in Bridgeton. Through my work, I advocate for families, children's education, and foster youth. I currently serve on the Salem County Special Services and Vocational Technical Schools District, and I previously served on the Lower Alloways Creek School District. A very brief background on, on how I grew up. I grew up on a farm in Lower Alloways Creek. Uh, my grandfather, Lindy, owned a, a nursery, and I lived two doors down from him. And I truly appreciate everything farmers do, because my grandfather retired and then started a, fir a farm and worked until the day he died at 77. That's what the farmers do. They work tirelessly, and they are the heart of Salem County. I also grew up uh, involved in the commercial fishing industry. My uh, father and my other grandfather were both commercial fishermen. They were commercial crabbers. And my grandfather, Tinker Hitchner, owned Tinker Seafood at Carl's Corner. My goal has always been to serve others. I work towards that goal through my career choices, uh, my education choices, and my choice to serve others as an elected and appointed official as a member of school boards. The issues that are very important to me are education, vocational education, respect for the rule of law, economic development, and reducing our tremendous tax burden. 
we have seen property taxes continue to go up while the services provided have at best remained the same. It is not enough to simply blame different levels of government for this problem. One of the biggest drivers of property taxes, school taxes, have consistently been ignored by those in Trenton. Due to this failure, we have seen school districts funding become more and more imbalanced. This has caused massive tax increases in many of the towns in LD3 in both Gloucester and Salem counties. And this issue has been ignored until it became politically beneficial to address. Hi, Charles. <laughs> On this and many other issues, we have seen more and more lip service as to how these problems are supposedly being addressed after years of being ignored. If you want to see real progress, you must make different choices. Additionally, we need to work diligently to change the laws and regulations to make this state more business friendly. We have seen both businesses and residents flee the state to find areas to work and live that are less financially onerous. This breaks my heart because I am truly proud of and committed to our very special corner of New Jersey. We offer a large number of successful small businesses, working farms, the commercial fishing industry, historical homes and landmarks, terrific public education, a thriving community college in SCC that I am proud to work with as a partner or as a member of the Votech School Board, and immeasurable potential for the current and future generations. We must fight to keep this, and I fear that we will lose it if we do not work together to address the very poor economic health of our state and this district. I represent the different choice needed. We need to fight against those in Trenton who willfully ignore the laws that they themselves pass. We need to honor our commitments to teachers, taxpayers, oops, sorry, seniors, and all the others who have been continuously crushed by the ever-increasing financial burden of living in this state. Another thing that we need to address, something that's very personal for me, is student debt. Um, as you've known, I'm sure you've all heard about it, student debt is really crushing um, the younger generation. Uh, but I think that my experience offers one, one way that we could go to Trenton and fix that problem. Through the Votech School, we offer a program through a partnership with SCC where our students get to take college classes while they are in high school. Every year, we have multiple students who graduate with their bachelor's degree a month and a half, before, I mean, sorry, their associate's degree a month and a half before they graduate uh, high school. We need to look at innovative solutions, both at in, uh, interest rates and things like that to help ease this financial burden. If we want to have an educated populace, we need to support it. Furthermore, we need to bring spending under control. Trenton, for too long, has spent money that it simply does not have. In Trenton, I will advocate for fiscally responsible policies. This means that I will support new spending, not through raising taxes, but through reducing spending in other areas. The time for change is now. We cannot expect things to get better if we continue to make the same choices year in and year out. For these reasons, I humbly ask for your vote for the New Jersey Assembly for myself and also for my running mates, Fran Grenier for Senate and Phil Donahue for Assembly. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. We're going to take a five-minute recess, and then we'll move on to the uh, freeholder candidates. If the freeholder candidates would come on stage, we do have more bottles of water coming.
Just to reiterate our rules of engagement for this evening, each speaker will have 10 minutes. Uh, there is a timer in the back of the room which clearly indicates how much time remains for each of their remarks. This portion of the program is being live streamed. It will also be available uh, after the uh, event has completed. We will upload it and have it ready for anybody who would wish to view again or take the opportunity to view for the first time. We're asking that each candidate remain uh, loyal to the 10 minute limit. We're asking for each candidate to remain positive. We ask each candidate to remain focused on his accomplishments, achievements, credentials, and background. We look forward to hearing their vision both for Salem County and South Jersey. Uh, I believe the water is coming in right now. We kind of went through our bottle, so I'll let that come forward. But Uzi, if you would step forward. We have an unusual set of circumstances this evening in that we have uh, two candidates for a full term and two candidates to fill an unexpired term. I would ask the candidates to identify themselves as well as the seat they are pursuing when they come to the podium. Okay, gentlemen, if you'd all like to come over here. Uzi has everything ready for us. Take two. Three. Three. Four. Four. I'm one. One. Okay. Two. Okay. Gentlemen, the podium is yours. Well, good evening, everyone. It certainly is a great evening. Great to see so many smiling faces out there, especially the three back there. Just keep your expressions to yourself, okay? I noticed that in the first round, everybody seemed to be so serious. I probably am not going to be that serious, but I will tell you this, that many of you know who I am. But for those of you who don't, I want you to know that uh, I was born in the Salem County Memorial Hospital on August the 1st, 1953. I graduated from Pennsville Memorial High School, and I have lived in Salem County my entire life. I married my high school sweetheart and we have been married 44 years. And I will tell you, and I make this statement every time I talk about her, that I love her more today than I did yesterday, and I will love her more tomorrow than I do today. There are some things that you probably don't know about me. I have two successful adult children. One is a casting director for 11 cable TV shows. They're all murder mysteries. She called me up not too long ago and said, Dad, I want you to play in a part. I said, do I live or do I die? She said, you live. That's kind. My son is a district manager for Red Lobster, both very successful. This information you probably don't hear about a candidate, and that's that I have the next phase of my life that came about was we adopted four legged creatures. I have what I refer to as four grand puppies. Their names are Mia, Sugar, Pepper, and Lucy, and two puppies by the name of Frisbee and Nikki. I have two of the most handsome grandsons you have ever seen. Now, I'm sure that every single grandparent says that. Uh, I have one that's three years old, his name is Grayson. I have one that is one year old, his name is Parker. Grayson is the thinker, Parker is the linebacker. I'll let you guess which one takes after their granddad. But let me just start out by making this statement, and it's a statement that I made a couple nights ago, and it's been rolling around in my head ever since then, and that is this. Salem County is too great to think small. It was about 10 months ago that I became the freeholder director in Salem County. It was then that I made a definite decision to change the way that we do government in Salem County. There were three things that I implemented immediately. One was that the, there would be a director-led department head meeting. The second thing, that there would be a director-led employee meeting. And the third thing, 
there would be a freeholder-led town hall meeting. At the very first department head meeting, I made two statements to every department head in the room. One is that as a freeholder board, this freeholder board will not micromanage. You're hired to do a job, we expect you to do it. Simple as that. The second thing is that we would communicate, communicate, communicate. And that's what we have done. Every single quarter we have held department head meetings, employee meetings, and town hall meetings. Running government is not too different than running a community bank. It just so happens that the community bank that I run is a five-star rated bank. And speaking of ratings, let me just say this. When I became a freeholder, Salem County was on the brink of its bond rating being reduced. We were able to step up and develop a plan and sit down with Standard & Poor's and tell them what we were going to do. And because we did that, they held the line on our bond rating at AA minus. The following year, actually two years later, because we demonstrated that we could do everything we said we would do, they increased our bond rating to AA. And it has remained at AA ever since. Salem County is too great to think small. Now tonight I was going to lead you all in a rendition of I've been working on the railroad. Actually, I was going to change the words to we've been working on the railroad. You know how that goes. And I was going to actually lead you in singing, but then I found out it was going to be live streamed and I decided not to do that. So uh, probably to your benefit. But, We've been working on the railroad all the live long day. We've been working on the railroad just to pass the time away. Well, not exactly just to pass the time away. You see, because we have a vision. And that vision includes the fact that we believe that there's a broader economic development scheme or plan for Salem County. We firmly believe that it will not only promote opportunities of economic development, in the city of Salem, the county seat, but all along the rail corridor. We also believe that there are opportunities for tourism on the railroad, both inside and around the railroad community. Friends, I just want to tell you that Salem County is too great to think small. And that's what led to us calling for an ad hoc committee to explore Amazon headquarters. Now today they announced there were 238 submissions. I'm proud to say that one of those belonged to Salem County. We appointed an ad hoc committee and at the very first meeting I remember Dr. Gorman turning to me and saying this, why do you want to do this? And my answer was quite simple, because we have to do something. We have to do something. friends. Salem County is too great to think small. And so we decided to put together the proposal and go solo, and that's what we did. For the record, there are three things that I think every county should have. They should have a good community hospital. That's why we need to do everything we can to make the deal for our hospital. The county needs to have a good community bank. Yes, I said it, and I would say it every time. It doesn't matter who the community bank is, but it needs to have a good community bank. And the third thing, it needs to have a good community college. And we don't just have a good community college. We have a great community college. And finally, I just want to say to you that the very first freeholder meeting in which I served as director, it was like that small, still voice said to me, be kind one to another. And it was at that moment that I said, you know, I want to encourage you all to go out and do three acts of kindness. And that sort of developed into a kindness campaign with the slogan, let's make Salem County known for its kindness. And I certainly appreciate the fact that the Chamber of Commerce, under the direction of Jennifer Jones, picked that up and carried it, the, the message forward entitled, scatter kindness. As a matter of fact, uh, Sue Ann Lighty's granddaughter painted a rock, which I prize, and it's in a 
uh, predominant place at the county offices because it's important that we be kind one to another. And not only be kind one to another, but offer hope. And so let me just say this, that I think the biggest challenge for Salem County today is tomorrow. And you need to elect individuals who are up for that challenge. I don't have to do this. I want to do it. I want to do it for the people of Salem County. I want to do it for all the right reasons. And so, uh, since I forgot to say in the beginning, let me say it now, I'm running for the full term, the three-year term for Salem County Freeholder. And I also want to, again, take this opportunity to thank Jennifer Jones of the Chamber of Commerce uh, for, for uh, having this event, uh, and Dr. Gorman at the Salem Community College for hosting it. So I'm going to make this challenge to you all here tonight. Go out this week and do three acts of kindness. Hopefully you'll do a lot more than that. Thank you all. May God bless you, and may God bless Salem County. Good evening. I'm Scott Griscom, and I am running for the two-year term. And since I'm, I'm new to the politics, I'm going to give you a little of my background. I'm sure there's some that don't know me. I've lived in Mannington my whole life. I grew up on a, a dairy farm with three brothers. I spent four years at college at Westchester University. At Westchester, I, I wrestled all four years. My senior year, I was the captain of the team. I received my degree in health and physical education, and I met and married my wife, Gwen. And 10 months from today, next year, we will be celebrating our 50th wedding anniversary. <laughs> uh, after graduation, we came home, back to Mannington, we both got teaching jobs in the Pennsville school system. While I was there, I did a lot of coaching. 28 years as a wrestling coach, 11 years as an assistant, and 17 as the head coach. Uh, half a dozen years coaching track and field, uh, a dozen years coaching cross country. Once I finished most of my coaching, I had 32 years of service in, and I retired. In my retirement, I started with 10 years of building houses for Habitat for Humanity. I worked with a great bunch of guys. I enjoyed the experience very much, and I learned a lot. I was surprised how much that I learned by working with these gentlemen. I served on the board of Big Brothers, Big Sisters, and after several years of that, I actually became a Big Brother. I had a young man from Salem. We started together when he was in fifth grade. Uh, we worked up to and through his graduation. Uh, it's hard to believe that I talked him in to going into the military because he was very much against it. He said he did not want to die. Uh, but it worked out great for him. Uh, he has now made it a career. He's stationed in Washington, D.C., married, and loves the military. Today, I am a volunteer assistant wrestling coach at Woodstown High School, and this year I'll be starting my 10th year. So that kind of brings us up to to date. In the last couple of years, I've had more free time on my hands, and, and I do like to keep busy. So I considered getting involved on my local level of government. And then I got a phone call, one of those phone calls that you hate, from the sheriff, Chuck Miller. And he asked me if I would be interested or willing to be appointed to an open seat on the freeholder board, and I did, and here I am. While, I was, while I've been on the board, I've learned a lot about Salem County, and I've learned about county government. I've seen a lot of things in the county office that we do good, all right? We're doing a good job at a, a lot of things, just to mention a couple. Our unemployment rate in Salem County in the last five years has dropped from 11.5% to five and a half percent. 
our debt in that same five years dropped from $75 million to $53 million. Right? We pay over a million dollars every year just on our interest. All right? We want to reduce debt. We are scheduled to make a payment, interest and um, principal together this year of four and a half million dollars. Right? That's important to us. We're going to continue working on that. Um, everybody that I talk to and, and going around knocking on doors, you know, what do we need to work on? What kind of problems do we have? And everybody says taxes. Taxes, taxes. Even us, we, we agree. Taxes is a problem. We're not interested in reducing staff. We're not interested in cutting services. Right? We need to improve our rateables. Right? In the last eight to 10 years, our rateables have been had their socks knocked off. It's just, we've lost a lot of rateables. We are hoping that the railroad can get us jobs and start the momentum going with new rateables. All right, so why am I the guy that should be taking this spot? I'm retired, so I have a, a lot more time than somebody who's not. I've just had nine months of on-the-job training. All right, I, I got sworn in in January. I've had a dozen years while I was at Pennsville uh, serving on a negotiating team. All right, I actually settled contracts, uh, worked on salary guides. I work good with people, even people that I, I don't particularly like or get along with. I still can work with those people. And probably most of all, I, I am my own man. Right? There's nothing that I want out of this, this being a freeholder. There's nobody that I owe anything. My, the only thing that I want is the satisfaction of knowing that I did the best for the people of Salem County and that we kept Salem County a great place to live and to raise a family. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Charles Hassler, and I'd like to be your freeholder of Salem County next year. I'd like to take the time to thank the Chamber for putting the event on. Jennifer, thank you very much. And Dr. Gorman, thanks for the college. We uh, can't do it without you, obviously, for hosting this event. I also was born and raised in Salem County, actually Salem City. I attended St. James High School right around the corner here, graduated, and I graduated from Salem Community College also with an associate's degree in business administration. Now the college was nothing like it is today. There was just that white building out there when I came here, the center building, but it's expanded, unbelievable, and the, and the services that they provide are great for the community. After college, I, uh, I applied and was lucky enough, fortunate enough, to get hired down at the nuclear plant and I worked for Public Service Electric and Gas. I became a member of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, where I spent 37 years. I worked in the plant for 24 years. I moved from custodian to controls technician. And after 24 years, I went to the union office where I was a business agent representing about 750 guys on a day-to-day -day basis with about 33 different job classifications. And that's what I did for the last 13 years of my career. During that time, I had the pleasure of working with a lot of different legislators up and down the state of New Jersey. I came to know a lot of things that you don't normally see when you're not working with legislators. And I'm going to tell you right now, in the 3rd District, you have some of the finest legislators that we have all over the state. They're good, honest, hardworking people, and they do us well in Salem County. I've been involved with many negotiations through my company, with the company, against the company, we've worked together with state issues that affected workers, the utility, down, especially down at the nuclear plant. And like I said, I retired 37 years of service, and that's where my real political life began. I always wanted to get in politics, but there was a thing about the work I did wouldn't allow me home enough, because I traveled a lot, so I couldn't get involved with politics. So as soon as I retired, I did, and I ran for, <clears throat> excuse me, ran for city council in Salem, where I was successful in my uh, campaign. 
I won that election and served on the served proudly Salem City since that time. During the time, I learned a lot about different things that the system, the way to get through the system, the way politics works. There's a lot of to, and I'll just call it the game. There's a lot to the game that you don't realize until you get into it. It shouldn't be that way, but it is what it is, and you got to find a way to change it. I've had a lot of uh, exposure to grant monies, shared services, things that we've been trying to do in Salem for quite some time now, and it's starting to move in the right direction. I was part of a team that went out and visited the company that was referred to, and they were in a uh, concrete business, and they're opening it as soon as the railroad gets done, they want to open a business in Salem, their business, and it's going to employ approximately 120 people. I've also gone to a couple other areas of the country to uh, speak with other companies and get their interest to come into Salem City originally, but Salem County also, whatever we can benefit from whoever we can get in here to get these jobs. We are about jobs, jobs, jobs. There's not much you can do in an economy if people aren't working. If people aren't working, they can't afford education. They can't afford to even buy a car. They can't afford to buy a home. We need jobs in this county and we need them desperately. I think we can supply that because we have potential in this county that hasn't been touched yet, in my opinion. We have farmland, which is the greatest thing going. The farmland preservation is the greatest, the best program in the state. But we need to find a way to mix in what we have otherwise with this farmland preservation. As I lost track of myself, I'm sorry. As a councilman, I've also had the opportunity to work with the Public Safety Committee in Salem City, which deals with law enforcement at the, at the city and the county level. So I understand how they have to operate in a way. I'm on the Public Works Committee, which deals with water and sewer activities of everyday citizens, and also the Street Department in the Salem City. I've also served on the Salem City Properties Department, which means you have to maintain and keep all the buildings the city owns, plus the ones we don't want to own, and quite honestly, you have a lot of people walk away from their mortgages, walk away from their taxes, and they think the city's got a, it's a great thing that we can take their properties on. We really don't want to be landowners. We don't want to be real estate agents, but that's things we have to do, and we, and we have to take them on. By doing that, I was able to secure a zero interest loan through state of New Jersey to take down 14 of the, the worst homes in Salem City, which may not sound like a whole lot, but it's going to do a lot for communities and their neighborhoods at the time. We've been able to do a lot of things in the city to revitalize it the whole time without raising taxes to an extreme amount, without laying off anyone, without contractors. So we were using our own workforce and we're staying within our own budgets to maintain Salem City and it's coming back and you'll see the results of that in a short time from now. I've served on many boards, panels, and committees throughout my lifetime. I've served with United Way. I was on the Governor's Blue Ribbon Panel for Community College in the state of New Jersey. I was a health care negotiator for our local union. I serve now as a lector and a trustee at my church, St. Gabriel Roman Catholic Church. And some of you may have seen me even there. I'd call bingo on any given Thursday night. I've been PTA president. I've been on budget committees. I've worked with Habitat for Salem County installing handicap ramps for the citizens who need those because of disabilities. I serve on the board for Resources for Independent Living, which is a nonprofit serving special needs population of Salem County. This board has some very vulnerable people in our county and opened my eyes to the needs of those who are less fortunate than I am. I've, aboard, I've been appointed to the board of, by this board of chosen freeholders to be on the Workforce Investment Board, which is a state-sponsored program through the Department of Labor. I volunteered to Salem Little League for the past 35 years where I started out as coach, and I still get out an umpire once in a while. Not quite as easy to get up and down behind the plate as it used to be, but I still try it. All these things I've done, I've considered a pleasure and an opportunity for me to serve the residents of our hometown and the community. There are many things that I have not covered, mainly because I just forgot what I've done over the last 40 years. But all these things I've told you about, I've enjoyed doing. And moving into the public servant to the county level, I'm really looking forward to, to getting to that level. And I'm not walking into this blindly. I understand that we have the seven freeholder board going to five. That's going to be a lot of restructuring. A lot of new things are going to have to be put in place to make things work. But I look at that as a, a great challenge for us so we can look at what we have and what we don't have in the county and put them in perspective order, in my opinion. We have resources that are just waiting 
to use in this county. Our land is valuable and we have waterfront. We have so many things that are, are there for potential to move this county forward. And I have to agree with the two gentlemen to my left. We have potential and we can get it done. During my time in Salem City, I've had the honor of seeking the help and working with the third district and that's Senator Sweeney, Assemblyman Berzicelli and Telefaro. And they've always been there when we've called them. If you don't call them, they don't know what you need, they can't help you. We need to be more involved with them. I see potential in this county that can overcome any of the obstacles we have. And as I said, we have a workforce in our county, a second to none, I think. And what we don't know, the community college has always been offering programs here. They will work to customize programs for any new industry that comes in. That's what we've been advertising as we go out from Salem City to try to bring new customers in, new businesses in to do, uh, to open plants in our city. So as I said, I'm running freeholder because I think I'm up to the task. I've dealt with the DEP, EPA, USDA, I've many state agencies through the time at Salem City. I'm asking you for support in the upcoming election. I know I can do the work to make up Salem County a better place to raise our children, a better place for a quality education, and a nicer place just to live. I'm running against Bob for the three-year term and I'd like you to show me your support. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Jesse Stenberger, and I'm running for the two-year term for Freeholder. I'd like to thank the Chamber of Commerce for hosting us tonight, as well as Salem County Community College. And more importantly, I'd like to thank all of you for staying till the end. I'm a lifelong resident of Salem County. I've lived in Woodstown for the last five years, and prior to that, I spent my entire life in the borough of Elmer. My roots in education are grown here in Salem County. I'm a 1981 graduate of the Harani Preschool on 3rd Street in Elmer, which led me to the Elmer Elementary School when they still had six grades. I'm a graduate of Arthur P. Shalk High School, class of 94, which led me to Catawba College in Salisbury, North Carolina, where I got a bachelor's degree in communication. After dabbling in various jobs, I ended up at Rowan University, where I got a master's of science degree in teaching, uh, specialization in elementary education, where I graduated with a 4.0 and was able to be inducted into the Alpha Epsilon Lambda Honor Society. My employment history also has deep roots here in Salem County. My first job out of college was at Ranch Hope in Alloway Township. After a year and a half, I ended up at Healthcare Commons here in Carney's Point, working with the adult mentally ill population, which sent me to New Point in Gloucester County. Upon going to graduate school, I did my student teaching at the Alloway Township School in fifth grade under the wonderful and remarkable Loretta Osborne. Upon graduating from Rowan, I was hired at the Mary Shoemaker School to teach third grade, moving up to fourth grade, and now in fifth grade, where I've been for the last five years. In addition to my role as teacher at uh, Mary Shoemaker, I'm the head tennis coach for the girls at Woodstown High School. I'm a two-time girls tennis coach of the year, fingers crossed for three this year four-time Diamond Division champion, and as of last week, the first ever South Jersey sectional champion in Group 1 in Woodstown High School tennis history. I've also served as president of the Woodstown Palsgrove Regional Education Association. I'm the current vice president. I serve on the NJA's Congressional Contact Committee. I just finished my term as negotiations chair within the union, settling our contract in August. I also, as president of the Woodstown Palsgrave Regional Education Association, fought the privatization of our paraprofessionals, successfully winning all their jobs back. My name may be familiar to many of you. Probably some of you know my mom, who I affectionately refer to as St. Donna for all the work she does. And my dad is the current mayor of Elmer, where he served on council or the mayor for over 25 years. And through him, I learned my most valuable lesson. I remember him coming home from a council meeting one night, and he had just reclaimed the majority 
and they wanted to fire the solicitor uh, to put in a Democrat. And he came home, he said, I just couldn't do it. He does a good job, and we have to keep him. And that lesson stuck with me about the value of keeping people who do a good job. I'm very fortunate to be married to the beautiful Nicole D. Teodoro of Carney's Point, the daughter of a retired Carney's Point Lieutenant, Arnie D. Teodoro, and a former Pensgrove High School cafeteria worker, Barbara D. Teodoro, who I imagine most of you in this room know who she is. Being a coach and a candidate, I've seen the beauty and diversity that is Salem County. There's a huge difference from the Willow Grove Fire Department pig roast to the Carney's Point all-you-can-eat shrimp and wing dinner to the LAC crab feast or a Warren Morgan Alloway meet the candidate night. I drive from the bucolic center of Woodstown through the open fields of LAC and Mannington into the historic towns of Elmer and Salem. I'm thankful that for 20 weeks in the spring and the summer, that my wife and I can ride our bikes or drive to Busby's farm to participate in their community-supported agriculture. I know that without question, the best meal in this area is the steak center at the center Inn. All this is unique and what makes Salem County what it is. With my level of experience and education, I could live anywhere in the United States. I choose without hesitation or reservation to live in Salem County. While on the campaign trail last week in Pennsville, a woman came up to us as we were knocking on her door, and she said to us, what are you going to do about the taxes? And we asked her to elaborate, and she said to us, if the taxes continue to go up, I can't live here anymore. I'm 80 years old. I've lived here my whole life, and I want to live here. If the taxes continue to go up, I can't. I turned to her and kind of winked at her and said, well, I can tell you this with 100% confidence. I've never raised taxes. I wish I could say that her situation was unique. Sadly, it's not. I've heard the same stories in Carney's Point, in Pittsgrove, in Pennsville, and in Woodstown. The greatest resource to any community is its people. We must determine why our county is one of the few to see a population decline. I look out the window of my office at home to the second oldest house in Woodstown. Two weeks before he left, Jim said to us, I have to leave. I'm moving to New Mexico. I'm walking away from my home. There's not enough work here for me to provide for my family. I can't afford this house, and I have to move on. I look at that house today that the bank has taken over with the fiberglass shingles and the ugliest white door you'll ever see on the second oldest house in Woodstown. I speak to my former tennis players who graduated from high school and are in college, and I say to them, well, what are your plans when you graduate? Do you plan on coming back here? And the response is inevitably, if you can find me work here, I'll definitely come back. We must invest in economic development. If anyone in this room has seen Charlie or I on the campaign trail, he has his signature phrase, jobs, jobs, jobs. At the age of 19, my dad got married with only a high school degree. He started out pushing a broom at Texaco Eagle Point in West Stepford. From there, he moved his way up to wastewater operator, earning $88,000 in 1997. Those opportunities don't exist for that type of person in today's Salem County economy. We need an active recruitment of industry to provide not jobs, but careers. Industries like organic farming, medicine and medical research. The Department of Labor and Workforce Development indicates our region is ideal for advancement in construction and transportation distribution logistics. Pursuing these opportunities will revitalize our economy and film the abandoned homes that litter our communities. We also need to maintain the services that we currently offer residents while returning those that we've lost. To be perfectly clear, I can't retire for another 19 years. And it is my hope and my wish 
that I'm going to spend those remaining 19 years as a teacher in the Woodstown Pilots Grove Regional School District and a resident of Salem County. I feel I bring a fresh perspective, a younger and more youthful approach to a changing world. I think about my eight-year-old nephew, Nicholas, from Mannington Township, and where will he be in 15 years, and what will he be doing? And will Salem County be a place that he calls home, where his parents lived, where his grandparents lived, and where his great-grandparents lived? I respect any individual who sacrifices in the service of people, who give their time to work for the betterment of the people of Salem County. I humbly ask your consideration with the hope that together we can restore Salem County to its past glory. Plainly, I want you to be my new boss. I end with a quote from Thomas Jefferson. Government exists for the interests of the governed, not for the governors. I thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a slice of Americana, something that is very, very important. We urge you, most importantly, on November 7th, cast your ballot. On behalf of the college, on behalf of the candidates, on behalf of the chamber, thank you very much for coming out this evening. Have a safe trip home.